A limited missile defense has a place in a comprehensive integrated plan of nuclear defense. But it should be seen for what it is, a last line of defense. Missile defense is not a silver bullet that by itself can adequately protect the United States and its allies from the enhanced threats posed by ballistic missile proliferation and the spread of weapons of mass destruction. But it's an important component that gives added credibility to the other elements of U.S. strategy, as well as a means to protect the American people if our non-proliferation and our diplomatic efforts prove less than perfect. It seems to me there's a confluence of interest here. That first and foremost, we should be focused on the diplomatic side of this, and secondly, on the technical side of how to deal with those nations who resist the diplomatic overtures. Diplomacy and cooperation are our first line of defense against the spread of weapons of mass destruction. Missile defense is our last line if all else fails. At present, the administration seems to be more highly invested in developing our last line of defense and underinvested in the diplomatic and cooperative efforts which are essential to protect us from the most immediate and most likely dangers to our national security. Policy in this area routinely gets way out ahead of the technology since policymakers sometimes, and I'll stress sometimes, do not have a solid understanding of the science involved. Yes, of course, it matters what the security implications will be and what the threat may be, but if the technology does not work, the policy questions are all but moot. It's uh, really quite clear, at least from the point of view of someone like myself, who's a technical person, that his administration has not conducted an adequate review of the technical issues surrounding missile defense. Let me first talk about mid-course in some detail just to give you a little bit of a feel of what the current mid-course system looks like. It is a rocket, a set of rocket boosters, on top of which uh, is a uh, device called the kill vehicle. It's just a telescope that images objects in space. It's launched to uh, high velocity it then coasts in the near vacuum of space and it looks through this telescope at the uh, decoys and warheads as it closes on them. So 60 seconds uh, prior to this uh, intercept, uh, you would open your eyes and you would see these different objects. And you would have to select these um, from among these objects, which of them is the warhead and which is the decoy. What these objects could look like are balloons of various sizes. Could be a warhead. This is an actually a Mark 12A warhead. Could be a uh, what's called an inflatable electro-optical decoy. This is something the United States has actually built. This is a this is a bag uh, with with a with a water jacket in it to keep its temperature constant. So this is an American decoy. And uh, and basically at the great distance, you could. Um, uh, not tell the difference between these objects. Uh, one of the countermeasures you use, uh, that's commonly used, the United States has done this and so has the uh, former Soviet Union, is what you do is you create clouds of small wires called chaff. In the near vacuum of space, these wires travel along with a warhead, even though these wires are tiny and, 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 and thousands of them per pound can be thrown out. And what you do is you create clouds, a radar can't see into this cloud, a radar just sees a big blur, the um, radar tells the kill vehicle where to go. So what happens when the, ra when the kill vehicle opens its eyes, if you have many chaff clouds, it just won't, it'll just see nothing. And uh, you've missed an opportunity to make an intercept. You're going to hear a lot about the fact that in order to have any system, develop any system that is viable, we have to do things now that require us to break out of ABM now. That is simply not true. That is simply not true. I'll say it one more time. That is simply not true. To prove that uh, he is serious about national missile defense, so the argument goes, 
President Bush must abrogate the ABM Treaty now. The ABM Treaty, it is said, is thwarting the technology needed for NMD. To the contrary, the 1972 ABM Treaty is not holding back the design and development of the technology needed for NMD, nor is the treaty slowing the testing of an NMD uh, system. This is because development of NMD will take a decade or more for technical and budgetary uh, reasons. Until the United States government learns whether the technical, budgetary, and operational problems that National Missile Defense presents can be solved, the ABM Treaty is the least of President Bush's problems. And so you examine the fundamental premise. The fundamental premise is the reason we have to go ahead and potentially unilaterally break out of the ABM Treaty is that the President of the United States is going to get a phone call. And the phone call is going to say, by the way, we're going to invade South Korea. If you guys help, we're going to take out one of your cities. And then I'm going to call in my National Security Advisor here, Joe, and I'm going to say, Joe, what are my options? And Joe's going to go, oh, you got plenty of options, Mr. President. We can get 90% of those suckers. 90% of those things they fired us, we can guarantee we can get. Now I got options. I said, what the hell? Albuquerque and San Francisco, I can spare them.